What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 10 video. I know we're pretty early in the season, but I want to make a tier list or early series opinions video. Uh, I will do a follow up to this later on as Series 10 develops as a metagame. However, for now, I want to give my first impressions on which restricteds are the best, which are the worst. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this name point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I try to bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content and answer my comment question of the day in the comment section right now. Which restricted do you think is the best and which one do you think is the worst? I'd love to hear your opinions. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, this is actually a Series 8 tier list technically, but it's the same Restricteds, nothing changed uh, beyond the fact that Dynamax isn't legal, which does make a pretty huge difference into how the metagame developed. Uh, things that used to be viable because Max Airstream was an option like Thunderous are now slightly less viable and we see things like Galarian Zapdos picking up in usage. And we have some early tournament results to get an idea of this sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and start. So Calyrex Ice. Now, I'm not entirely sure about Calyrex Ice. I have been messing around a lot on the Legacy VGC ladder. However, I haven't actually ran into too many Calyrex Ice teams. I do think that the copycat strategy is one of the things that sort of gave it a slight boost to viability. Um, and now that Max Guard copycat isn't a thing, it isn't as easy to get off Trick Room with this thing. However, Indeedy next to it is still really good. Clefairy next to it makes it so nothing really one-shots this thing, uh, especially since nothing can really like max steel spike on it. I think it's really scary. Uh, however, the rise in usage of Wide Guard does make Glacial Lance a little bit less viable overall. Not that it isn't viable, it's an incredibly strong move, and I always had this joke saying nothing resists Glacial Lance. Uh, now, nothing can even Dynamax to try to resist Glacial Lance, so that is something that's really huge about it. I'm going to go ahead and drop Calyrex Ice in B tier, and maybe low A tier, a tier. I would call it like high B, low A. I am going to try to put these in order of viability within their tiers after I've put them in the tiers themselves. Now, Calyrex Shadow is a solid A tier in my opinion. Like I said, Indeedee Female is absolutely insane. Next to this thing, it gives it uh, Expanding Force as a double targeting move. And essentially the power of Expanding Force, um, when you account for doubles, uh, makes it about as strong as two individual Psychics. So imagine you're facing this thing, it's got a Life Orb on it, and it just got Helping Handed, and it's clicking Expanding Force, and you don't have a Dark type on your side of the field, you are taking absurd amounts of damage, and it's not really anything that anything wants to switch in on. So yeah. Uh, I think Calyrex Shadow is absolutely absurd right now. Uh, we are seeing a uh, slight increase in usage of Incineroar, and I know that Incineroar is already huge, like it's already one of the biggest Pokemon ever. Um, but the, the the usage is increasing ever so slightly, just like, you know, from 36% of teams to like 37 or something. Uh, and that's because Fake Out is much more viable, uh, which because Incineroar is being used more, there are more Incineroars to switch in on uh, Astro Barrage. And something else to note about Calyrex Shadow that's absolutely huge is Max Quake is no longer an option for it. So it's not going to be able to one-shot Incineroar with like a helping hand attack. Like now Mud Shot's just going to bounce off of Incineroar. So that's something to note, but I do think Calyrex Shadow is absolutely insane right now. A tier is definitely where it deserves to be. Dialga is another one I haven't seen too much of. So this one's going to be more speculation than anything. I think Dialga is still going to maintain the matchups that it had in series um, in series uh, eight. Like it's going to maintain the same sort of viability. It's a good Trick Room Pokemon. It has to be fearful of Landorus uh, still, but now Landorus doesn't have access to Max Quake. Uh, it isn't too scared of a Sacred Sword coming off of. Um, Zacian, mainly because Zacian uh, does get that plus one attack from uh, Intrepid Sword. However, Sacred Sword, if you don't know, also, I believe, ignores the positive boost. So it's just like always neutral. I might be completely wrong on that, but I'm 90% sure that's how it is. Um, so it can easily tank hits from Zacian. Play Rough doesn't do too, too much because you're half Steel type. So I think this guy's going to be like a solid C tier, um, like high C, low B, if that makes sense. I just burped a little bit, uh, but I don't know. It could be B tier in my opinion. Uh, like, I'm trying to think. Like, Groudon is seeing slight usage buffs. Uh, or it isn't seeing as much because, like, Venusaur isn't, like, huge. So, like, maybe less Groudon makes Dialga slightly more viable or something. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just drop it in C because I know that Groudon's better than it. But Groudon's not going to be in A. It's probably going to be B. And these guys are not on the same level. So just relatively speaking, we're going to say C, but you could make an argument for B. 
Eternatus, I'm going to go ahead and put in B tier as well. Uh, I think that that's a major sleeper pick right now. Just being able to drop a meteor beam on whatever you want and get that plus one is really crazy. It's got great bulk. It can live pretty much anything once. Even plus two, uh, plus two Xerneas Moonblast uh, is something that it can tank if you EV for it properly. Mine is a roll in its favor to live. Like the current set that I'm running is a 66% chance to live or something like that at plus two Timid with Fairy Aura and everything. Uh, so it can take that pretty well. It easily tanks a hit from Zacian, uh, even at plus one with Behemoth Blade. Uh, so yeah, I think that this thing is kind of slept on right now, but it's about as viable as Calyrex Ice kind of is. I think just being able to hit things with those powerful moves with Dynamax Cannon, with Draco Meteor, if you so choose to do, if uh, you want to go for Meteor Beam, if you want to go for Flamethrower to actually beat Zacian at plus one, because you can Oko Zacian at plus one uh, with Flamethrower. Uh, it has a lot of options. I think it's just like a very high mid, low, high tier pick. So B is right where it deserves to be. Giratina. <laughs> I'm sorry, Giratina. I'm sorry what they did to you. You are just not having a good time. Uh, both forms, in my opinion, both forms wound up in D tier. They just don't do anything the best. They are really bulky and they can take a hit pretty well, but... Calyrex Shadow exists and just completely invalidates other ghost types uh, that are restricted Pokemon. And you're going to see that again. You're going to see that again with uh, Lunala and Duskmane, or Duskwings Necrozma. It's just not able to carve out a niche in a metagame with Spectrier or, or Calyrex Shadow uh, existing. Uh, and on top of that, there are better dragon types that you could be using. You could honestly say that uh, Rayquaza hits things harder than, um, than like, it, it, it hits more things, I guess. It's mainly just Rayquaza has like more coverage options uh, than this Giratina. Like it's a ghost dragon type. If you want to use a ghost dragon, maybe just use Dragapult at that point. It's not a restricted. You don't have to waste a slot. Yeah, they do kind of different things, but it's very hard to make a case for Giratina in any format where, where Calyrex Shadow exists. So yeah, uh, it might get Trick Room. I'm not sure. I'm not too familiar with it. So maybe if you want to run like a fast Trick Room Pokemon for some reason, maybe you can convince yourself that that might be worth it. But yeah, it's just not good. Uh, Groudon is, once again, another B tier, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, losing access to GMAX Venusaur and GMAX Charizard is huge for Groudon. Charizard is still going to hit like a truck, but that Max Wildfire, that uh, Max Vine Lash are really what put Groudon over the top. It wasn't so much Groudon itself that than it was its partners. And that's why a lot of people made the argument that Torkoal is a better drought user than Groudon, which I sort of agree to an extent, because let me tell you something. I've never missed an eruption, but I have missed Precipice Blades more times than I can count. And yeah, they're two different things, but you know, it's, it's more or less a joke. Uh, I think Groudon's going to be B tier, mainly just for the fact that it enables things like Venusaur to put things to sleep. Uh, we have seen things like uh, Groudon Venusaur being uh, viable in Sun series back in 2019. And yes, there are other Pokemon available now that uh, make it pretty different to Sun series. However, you know, Venusaur getting access to new tools like Weather Ball and Earth Power do make it so it can actually defend itself versus Zacian. Uh, and yeah, it's also immune to Regieleki Electro Web, so that could be really useful. It's just immune to Electro type moves, which is really good in a format uh, like this one. So yeah, I think that Groudon is a solid B tier. Uh, ho -Oh is another B tier in my opinion. Being able to absolutely wall out Zacian to no end is incredible. It is weak to Regieleki, which a lot of Zacian do see themselves next to. However, uh, ho -Oh just being able to, it's, it's got huge bulk. It can probably tank at least one hit from a Regieleki, especially a more supportive set. Um, and just being able to spam Sacred Fire on the field is really big. Uh, you'd have to be pretty careful of things like uh, Landers Rock Slide and other rock coverage moves because now you're not able to max Airstream. You're not able to double your HP to tank rock hits that would normally knock you out. However, the bulk is still there and it is still going to be viable to an extent. Uh, I think that its viability mainly comes from walling out other viable Pokemon. It walls out Xerneas. Uh, you can run like Whirlwind now. Oh my God, it just hit me. Whirlwind's viable again. <laughs> Whirlwind and Roar are viable again for beating Xerneas because Dynamax isn't a thing. Uh, but yeah, that's that's huge. You can run those moves again. Uh, and yeah, that's actually really big for Ho-Oh. So being able to beat out the Steel types in the format, being able to beat out uh, the Premier Fairy type in Xerneas is really huge for it. So I think it's really great. Kyogre is going to be a solid A tier for me. Uh, I think Kyogre could make an argument of being S tier. However, the existence of Regieleki plus Incineroar to beat Torn Ogre on lead is really nice. Yes, they can still Tailwind, but 
Kyogre does not like taking an Electroweb from Sashaleki, and if that Electroweb lands from Sashaleki, it's not going to take the follow-up hit, because now it's slower than Aleki. So, yeah, uh, I think Regieleki is actually really nice to have in a format where Kyogre exists, because now Torn Ogre isn't as oppressive as it was in previous formats. Um, but, yeah, I think Kyogre did end up getting the short end of the stick with no Dynamax to the to the fact that it's not going to be able to spam Max Geyser. However, the fact that things can't Dynamax also means that its Water Spout from the Scarf set is going to be hitting significantly harder overall because things won't be taking it as well. So I think that's pretty nice. Uh, the drop in Groudon usage is also really good for it. Uh, it doesn't enjoy facing off against uh, things like uh, Eternatus or even a plus two Xerneas, which could take a hit. And there are other Pokemon in the format that could wall it out. But I think that uh, Kyogre is sitting pretty at A tier, like for sure. It could even be S tier if I was so inclined, but I'm going to save S tier for a Pokemon that you all know is going to end up there. Next up, we have Kyurem, D tier. It isn't even a Pokemon. <laughs> it's it's like a shell of a Pokemon. We all know that. Uh, I could put Kyurem black and white on here. Uh, if I were to put Kyurem black and white anywhere, it would be C tier. We have seen them do good. Unfortunately, they're not on this tier list for some reason. So we'll just say the other two Kyurem forms are sitting at C tier. Um, they're about as viable as they've ever been. They're they're good enough. <laughs> they are good enough. But Kyurem itself, uh, not even like a complete Pokemon. It gets outclassed by just about any other dragon on this list. It just, you know, they lose ice coverage, but it's not like it mattered too much in the grand scheme of things anyways. Uh, next up, we have Lugia. I'm going to put Lugia at C tier, maybe D tier. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't have Max Airstream again, so you can't really use the weakness policy Max Airstream set like you could have before. But it is still good enough where it can take a hit and maybe revenge something with the weakness policy hit. Uh, having multi-scale is really big for it because it's it's not relying on Dynamax to get the weakness policy off. It can still run weakness policy, but it's not hitting quite as hard without Max Airstream off of Aeroblast. So I'm going to put it at C tier. Pretty open and shut case there. Lunala, I would put it C tier or D tier. It's kind of in between for me. Uh, I'm going to say C tier because I still respect Lunala as being a powerful attacker with a move that bypasses abilities, which could be big in some situations. Uh, however, Calyrex Shadow. It's just Calyrex Shadow that does it in for me. The fact that it just does not take an Astro Barrage very well is kind of big. Maybe now that Dynamax isn't a thing, Wide Guard Lunala can be a solid pick. So that's why I have still I still have hope for it. It's not D tier, it's gonna be like, I'd say high C tier, like right, I'll put it here. I'm not going to put it past Dialga. Um, but I think having access to Wide Guard to wall out Astro Barrage, since these things aren't going to be running Shadow Ball or anything, is going to be really useful because you can just spam it over and over again to block Expanding Force, to block um, Astro Barrage, which does fix that matchup to an extent, uh, as long as you have another Pokemon next to it that can deal with the Calyrex Shadow. Uh, but Kyogre is another Pokemon that actually doesn't have too terrible of a time with. Psy Shock deals decent damage because it's targeting the weaker defense stat, and Moon Guys Beam still does decent damage to other Pokemon on this list, uh, like Calyrex Ice, like Eternatus. It does okay damage, but obviously you're going to want to click the Psychic move. Uh, it does pretty good damage to Groudon as well. Granted, it's not an Assault Vest set, so yeah, I'm going to put this thing at like mid C tier. It's It's got potential to develop. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll put Mewtwo at about the same spot. It's just a hard hitter. Uh, mainly Mewtwo is just fast, fast psychic type. It's slower than the other fast psychic type though, but it is it it is more coverage oriented. Like it does get flamethrower, it does get ice beam, it does get thunderbolt. It has access to more moves than the other fast psychic types, but uh, it just isn't as viable because of the lack of speed. And the fact that it loses out to these two uh, isn't very good for it. This guy, I don't know. You could be good again. You can probably take an Astro Barrage. So I'm going to put you at about the same spot as... Uh, I'll put you above him. I think that these guys actually won't be too terrible. Uh, mainly just because they're going to be able to tank the hit because of their ability, which lowers super effective damage. Uh, and probably set up Trick Room. I think it'll be fine for setting up Trick Room. And it could still run a weakness policy. So maybe we'll see Necrozma, Dawn Wings end up like having some tournament placements. But I don't see it really being all that viable overall. I'll actually go ahead and put uh, Necrozma Dusk Main at B tier, though. I think that Necrozma Dusk Main is probably one of the bigger sleeper picks. Uh, it walls out Zacian to no end. Like, Zacian has no options for really beating this thing because of how insanely bulky it is. It is, once again, one of the few Pokemon that can still reliably run weakness policy 
and have like a self-proc Pokemon next to it. And Sunsteel Strike hits really hard. It also has access to good coverage moves. It does get Photon Geyser, which now is more viable because it doesn't turn into a special max move. You can run Photon Geyser and hit with a physical attack stat, and that's really big. Um, it also has access to ground moves to beat things like Eternatus, to beat things like Zacian if it wants to run like, uh, I believe it gets Stomping Tantrum, but you could also run like Earthquake if you really want to. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, I think that this guy's got some potential in the format, especially next to like Rillaboom. It, it's, it's got pretty good synergy next to like Rillaboom in a standard Trick Room team. So I like that. Um, Di not Dialga, Palkia, I'm going to go ahead and put eh, right next to you. I don't know how to order this tier really in particular, but Palkia being able to wall out things like Kyogre and I guess to an extent Zacian. It walls out Zacian if it's not running Play Rough, which... Granted, a lot of them are not. Uh, it could be good. It's mainly just going to be strong water dragon. Like, I don't really see it doing too much beyond that. But it does wall out Kyogre, which is nice. I think Rayquaza could be okay. I did use a Meteor Beam set to some pretty decent results in Series 8. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put... I don't want to put him in C tier, because I almost want to say he's like B tier. But that's kind of a stretch. I'll put him... I'll put him here. Uh, I think Rayquaza is fine. Being able to turn off weather for Kyogre is really useful and still having access to Meter Beam is nice. It's also decently bulky. It's got great defenses for um, for such a frail looking Pokemon and for such a powerful Pokemon. Being able to go for like Swords Dance Extreme Speed is really nice, but I think uh, Rayquaza is a lot better in a double restricted format than it is in a single restricted overall, mainly just because Kyogre is one of the partners it wants more than anything. You are just going to these guys are just dropping into C tier for me. They're just okay. They're just okay. Like, it's really hard to be D tier when you're restricted, but I'll put you guys as, like, bottom C tier. These guys are just... They have similar stats, but swap the physical attack and special attack. Uh, Electric Dragon, I guess, maybe I can put you a little bit higher um, because it's able to beat out Kyogre pretty easily. And yes, I guess it can beat Calyrex Shadow if you give it, like, an Assault Vest set, but... They really don't like facing off Landorus, like neither of these guys really like Landorus that much. Uh, and losing access to Max Wormwind is kind of bad for them overall. Uh, and I still find you just very underwhelming. Like there are better fire types that you could be running right now than <laughs> than making it your restricted Pokemon. Uh, and not being able to wall at Kyogre reliably is really bad for Kyurem, so... Uh, or not Kyurem, what's your name? Rushiram. So yeah, uh, I don't really think they're that great. I think Solgaleo, uh, you could make a case for B tier. Once again, decent weakness policy Pokemon, uh, immune to speed drops from Regieleki, and just being able to hit things pretty hard. I'd put it bottom B tier, though. We have seen Solgaleo be used to pretty decent results within Dynamax format, but losing access to Max Steel Spike and Max Quake is really huge for it. Uh, however, it's still able to hit things quite hard. It has to be really careful with Calyrex Shadow, but uh, I don't really know if it's gonna care too much if it has the proper support. And I just scrolled all the way down by pressing the spacebar. Yeah, I think uh, Solgaleo is fine. It's probably better than everything in C tier, but it's not as good as most of the things in B tier. Xerneas, uh, you're going to go ahead and go right up to A tier. We've seen a lot of Xerneas results. Losing Dynamax is really big for Xerneas because a lot of the things that uh, threaten Xerneas could actually just eat a hit and one shot it. <laughs> There were so many good steel types before that uh, could take a hit from Xerneas by just Dynamaxing, and now they don't take them quite as comfortably. For example, if you're not properly EV'd, things like Celesteela can be two shot by plus two Moonblast and Fairy Inferiora. So, yeah, uh, Xerneas just having that is really nice. Uh, yes, Zacian exists and can be a huge nuisance for Xerneas. However, once again, proper support, you'll be able to deal with it. We have seen a lot of Volcarona Xerneas running around because of Volcarona is able to deal with Zacian to an extent. Rage Powder is really nice for supporting the, the Xerneas when it goes for the Moonblast, and the chance for Flame Body to burn is awesome. Will-O-Wisp is another move that they like to run, and just having like Heat Wave or Flamethrower to hit the Steel types is awesome. So Xerneas really benefited the most, in my opinion, from Dynamax being gone, uh, but I... Yeah, I don't think it's S tier. I think it's still going to sit at A tier with the rest of these guys. Yeah. Eveltal is going to be a solid B tier pick from me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put it in between Eternatus and Calyrex Ice. The reason I put it here is probably... Actually, let me move you over. There you go. Is probably mainly just Sucker Punch and Snarl and like the Assault Vest set being so insanely good for beating out special attackers in this format. Uh, once again... I keep saying, oh, I'm sorry, I'm 
when I have like these off the cuff videos, I say oh, a lot because I'm thinking while I'm talking, but being able to wall out special attackers with an assault vest snarl set is in is incredible. Being able to hit things with such a powerful sucker punch, knock off whatever it wants to go for is insane. Evolatol is never going to be that bad in a restricted format. It's usually just not that great. It's it's good and it's just it's just good. Um, it doesn't like facing Zacian. Obviously, Zacian does have tools to beat it. However, they typically don't run play rough, as I said before. So with proper support, you're able to deal with it pretty effectively. I could see like Lando, Eveltal being together on a team. I could see like Eveltal plus some halfway decent fire type being able to pair together to beat out uh, Zacian since Zacian obviously can take a foul play pretty okay because of its bulk and the fact that it's resisting it with its fairy typing. So yeah, uh, it's, it's a pretty decent Pokemon and I like it in this format. Zacian is going to be our one and only S tier. It's just such a good Pokemon having such an insanely high speed tier, uh, that I can't even remember. It's like higher than most things. I don't know why I can't remember its speed tier. Is it like in the one forties? No, it's faster than Calyrex shadow. Is it? Let me double check. I always forget this thing's speed tier. Mainly just because I like just focus on speed creeping it and then beating it. Like I, I, I focus on beating it in the team builder, if that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, I know I outspeed Zacian with this thing. All right. Yeah, it's 148. So it, it's able to outspeed like a lot of huge Pokemon. Um, it does get outsped by Calyrex Shadow, which is kind of huge. However, that speed can or with speed control next to it, like Regieleki or a Tailwind user or even just anything with like Icy Wind, <laughs> any sort of speed control with Zacian on your team is going to make it really viable. Once again, typically Reggie Alecki. Uh, however, just the fact that it gets plus one by hitting the field is insane. Uh, Behemoth Blade is great for beating out most Pokemon. It beats uh, Calyrex Shadow, it beats Xerneas, it beats this Calyrex, it beats pretty much everything that isn't Steel type or Kyogre. And even then, Kyogre doesn't like taking the hit because it doesn't have as good physical defense as it did as it does special. And you know, it has a decent amount of coverage. You could run close combat Zacian, you could run Sacred Sword Zacian, you could run Wild Charge Zacian and absolutely obliterate a Kyogre. And it has good bulk too. If you look at Zacian overall, look at this 92, 115, 115. That is all the bulk it needs to do what it needs to do. And 170 attack getting boosted to plus one. Like that is insane. It's already at 222. If you give that a 50% boost, you know, times 1.5, that is 333. That is an insane attack stat. So yeah, I think it's pretty good. Uh, Zamazenta, I think is going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and put it pretty high in C tier. I don't see it being incredible. I think it's going to be fine. I think that um, it did better in a Dynamax format, funny enough, but having access to Wide Guard to block Water Spout could be good. Just running a full Snarl support set and maybe just focusing on close combat and Behemoth Bash as a way of hitting things could be good enough, but it definitely preferred Dynamax because at the very least you can make a justification for it just hitting Dynamax Pokemon as though they didn't Dynamax with Behemoth Bash, but yeah, uh, I think it loses out the most from Dynamax not being a thing, <laughs> funny enough. Yeah, uh, I don't really think it's that great, but it's it's okay. It has some tools that could be useful. Snarl Wide Guard the, to be uh, the most notable there, and it does get coaching. I think that um, this could have some potential. I'm going to go ahead and put you right here. It's okay. I think that Zygarde is going to be Zygarde. It's going to be a Pokemon that gets developed by a handful of players as the metagame develops. It's going to be like slowly getting optimized for this format. And I have seen Zygarde do well in formats where it has no business doing well. However, it is absurdly bulky. You could run like dual screens, Grim Snarl next to it. Uh, you could run like Heal Pulse, Tapu Fini. You can just coil up. You can start clicking friggin' thousand arrows and dealing good damage. It could be good, but it's not B tier good. I'm gonna put it top of C tier. Uh, I think it's gonna have to take a minute or two metagame wise, you know, minute or two, meaning like a couple of weeks, couple of months uh, to develop and we'll see how good it is from that point on. But uh, I know the potential that Zygarde has in any format. So it's gonna sit right here in C tier for me right now and maybe move up like here or here. Uh, but yeah, these are more or less ordered within their tiers. More or less, I could make an argument to do this or I could make an argument to do that. But this is just an early metagame impressions thing based off of what tournament results we have so far, some showdown replays that I've seen, uh, just some inquiry from asking people who've been playing a lot of Legacy VGC on that ladder and me just playing by myself in my own experience. So yeah, this is what I have to say about the metagame so far. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed or agree with me or, you know, just comment down below if you disagree with me. But with that, I'm going to call it everyone have a nice night. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.